And hello and welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host. And as always, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the show. Well, we have a wonderful guest for you today and she has a fabulous title. So let me take a moment and introduce her to you. She's a playwright. Her name is Anna Maria Trusky, first off. And she's a playwright, a nonfiction and fiction writer, an editor, an actor, an improv performer, a director and a producer. And I'd like to welcome her to the show. And Anna, thanks so much for being here. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Deborah. It's great to be here with you. I great. like your opening music. I was dancing here in my chair. Oh, yeah, I know. The, the opening is a nice uh, Broadway kind of feeling, so I'm glad you like that. It um, is. I had my jazz hands going and everything. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, what I like to do in the beginning of the show, which I do with every show, is to introduce the guest to the viewer. So why don't you take a moment and take us back. Tell us about your background. Oh, how far back do you want to go? Did you slides or just the current life? No, I'm, um, so I um, have an English and, and theater background um, through college and started doing theater in high school and kind of figured out like where I belonged. Um, through that, and I've been involved with theater pretty much my entire life, even um, as I've continued working as a writer and an editor, um, a writer of nonfiction, you know, business writing and things like that. But I've also um, found a way to work theater in, and predominantly I was an actor for many years. And then I started um, writing short plays. And that grew into writing longer plays, and I also direct and produce. And um, one of my favorite things is um, being an improv performer, which, of course, doesn't involve writing at all. It just involves having a, a zany mind and coming up with crazy things in the moment. Um, but not just coming up with crazy things, also working collaborating, collaboratively with your um, scene partners to create something unique together on stage. Um, and I, I really love that. I was not good at, at sports at all or anything athletic. Um, and theater and improv um, provide kind of a, a team feeling that a lot of us nerdy kids didn't get um, when we weren't participating in sports. So that's why it's so important to keep the arts funded in schools with um, theater programs and music programs and everything. So. That was kind of my rambling way of giving you a little background about me. I love it. It's perfect. They'll love it. Um, you're mentioning first off as being an actor. Did you think that you would be spending your time as you aged just performing? Was that one of your dreams? It was. I think most um, like theater kids, when you first get involved in, in shows, kind of have stars in your eyes and I was living in upstate New York and a lot of people um, I knew from my community were moving to the city and going to, um, the, you know, to acting school and auditioning for shows and I thought about that too, but um, it, it just was not, would, would not have been a good place for me to have lived. I just didn't want to live in a big city. Um, and, you know, like a lot of creative people, I'm a combination of very confident and extremely insecure. And I also am not a, a super competitive person and trying to get into professional theater in New York City would have eaten me alive. And I knew that. So I moved to Connecticut and I got a job with a publishing company and and found ways to do theater, um, you know, in, in the area. And the more I've thought about it as I've gotten older and hopefully wiser is that it really, to me, doesn't matter where, where you're doing theater, where you are showing um, work that you've written for the stage. People are, are the same everywhere and everybody deserves to have um, entertainment and, you know, live entertainment in their lives. And um, I'm happy to do that wherever, you know, it's kind of like the bloom where you're planted philosophy. Um, and that's kind of what I, what I bring to bear in, in my theatrical pursuits. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, try to send their plays out to get done elsewhere. And that that's great. But, you know, an audience in Norwich or New London or Groton is just as valuable as an audience 
in another state somewhere. It's exciting to get your work done someplace else. But I've really focused on doing it right here. You've and mentioned I'm happy. You've mentioned theater uh, several times. Was theater your love and what you wanted to pursue to begin with? Did you think about film, television, video, corporate, anything else? Um, yeah. I mean, I when I was a really little kid, the first time I ever saw, um, for example, a musical, a movie musical, you know, or um, when I started, you know, the first time I ever saw comedic movies, um, you know, and even like old Marx Brothers things and everything, I was sort of like, that's me, it's me, that's what I want to do, you know, and um, I love to make people laugh. And um, as far as, you know, what you're about corporate, um, what, do, what do you mean by corporate? Do you mean like acting in industrial films? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a former actor myself, and corporations would hire you to do something for them, a corporate video. No. So I wasn't sure well, if actually, that was of interest. Um, well, actually, I was writing scripts for corporate videos when I was working at the publishing company um, that I worked at for 18 years here in southeastern Connecticut. It was owned by Simon & Schuster, and um, one, of, one of the product lines during that time period was, um, was industrial film, so I was actually writing them um, as opposed to acting in them. So when you were writing for them, did and you also have written, I believe, some plays, is there a difference in the writing process? Yes, there is. I mean, if you're writing a play, especially if you're if you're not writing it for a specific um, um, audience or you're not following certain submission guidelines or whatever, and there's certainly a lot more freedom. Um, you know, with the industrials, we were we were pretty limited. I mean, I I have quite an imagination, but um, you know, in that world, um, I had to rein it in quite a bit. Now, also, you were mentioning improv performer. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about what that means? So, um, well, I'll tell you how I got started with that. In two thousand and three. I had written a children's play called Under the Mystic Sea that I was also directing and producing. And it was, um, I was being interviewed on a local television show about that play. And I was, I had my coat on and I was ready to leave after my interview. And the next couple of people who were being interviewed were um, in the chair and, and the person, people were starting to interview them. And I, I heard a few things that I kind of stopped in my tracks. And um, those people, it was um, Iris Sikorsky and Greg Bliven, and they had this show coming up at the Ivoryton called um, the Two Man, Two Man, One Man Show. And it was a fundraiser for an organization that Ira and his uh, late wife, Monica, were starting called Healing Hearts Through the Arts um, to raise money for hospice um, programs to do um, art therapy for their clients as well as clients' families. And um, one of the things that Ira has, have, has a background in is improvisation. Um, he had worked with Paul Sills, who started Second City and also um, was, the, is, was the son of Viola Spolin, who started all the classic improv games that all modern improv is, is, is based on. Whose Line Is It Anyway? And you know all the improv troops that you see um, are, are doing things based on, on her teachings. So I, I listened to, to um, Ira's interview, and afterwards I said, hey, I really want to help you with healing hearts through the arts. And he called me up um, a couple weeks later and said, I'm starting an improv troupe, and I'm going to be teaching classes, and I think I need to ha ask you to be part of it. So um, I ended up studying improv with him for five years, and a troupe grew out of um, those classes. And um, we named it um, Comedy on Demand, which was something I was thinking of, of using for a business I was going to start up. And um, so we performed together for about 14 years um, all around the area. We, we did improv shows on moving trains, on the, you know, the Essex Steam train, and many, many other venues, greenhouses, restaurants, um, you name it. And what improv is to me, it's, it's a wonderful... Um, a uh, toolkit of, of uh, skills that you learn that allow you to, um, to respond better to, to others around you, to listen better, to um, be a better team player. Um, it's, it's, it's 
it it is about being funny and and you know getting out on stage and and making people laugh but there's a lot more to it than that and um it's all about listening and and not trying to pull something where you want it to go but you know listening creating something together um you've probably did mirror games and things when you were an actor and you know that's what the mirror game the classic you know mirror game is all about um so that so that's what improv you know is and was to me it's it's a way of connecting with other people and um having having a lot of fun but also just learning to really be more responsive to other people um and, a colleague of ours who brought you to my attention who's been a guest on the program who I have great respect for mentioned that you were involved with the Groton Regional Theater why don't we take a moment and talk about yeah. that what will you be doing so um I recently rejoined the board of Groton Regional Theater and I agreed when I joined the board to um produce a show for the group cuz the group you know like like all the theater groups in our area when covid struck it really kind of threw everybody for a, knocked everybody for a loop um and they're really you know Groton Regional Theater is really trying to to get back in gear again they used to do you know a full season every year and so what my love is original work as a as a playwright and um of course I love original work for the stage but it's it's also you know I I'm not so enamored of doing the a production of the same show that's been done 9 million times for 30 years or whatever um I really like new work so I I suggested that we do a, an evening of plays about um motherhood um because we you know it's in May it's the weekend after mother's day um you know May is a month for mothers but it's also uh, i thought it would be a good topic because everyone certainly had a mother or still does if they're lucky and um some of us are mothers i'm mother a mother to four-legged furry creatures but um i thought it would be a topic that everyone could relate to and um all the writers are from connecticut they're really great um and we have um an evening of nine short plays that are ranging from hilariously funny to very very poignant and we're very eager to to um get this up on its feet in front of an audience i think they're going to love it a lot speaking of that you're reminding me of the calendar what does your calendar look like for 2024 even into 2025 do you have things planned i do have things planned so um i've written a murder mystery that is going to be done as a dinner theater at the Thames Club on May 18th and it's a fundraiser for Ledyard High School's class of 2020 of uh, 2024's senior class trip and I'll probably be doing this the same show again um for Groton Regional Theater as a fundraiser in the summer I'm going to be involved with um the Meteor Night um 24 hour play a uh, festival up at the Burton Levitt Theater in Willimantic on as part of Wyndham Theater Guild and that's I believe June 22nd and I have written a new play that's a comedy it's a full length play um called An Italian Christmas Eve Feast that will be done on December 20th and 21st at La Luna Holiday Inn in New London so I'm going to be working on um I have the play all cast we've already had a read through I'm going to be working on getting all the ducks in a row for that you know getting the publicity out um getting a rehearsal schedule set and then we'll be rehearsing um into you know all through the fall for that and i have a wonderful cast um lined up and then um i have uh this crazy full length play i wrote several years ago that i've been thinking about turning into a musical and i'm hoping to be able to work on that Okay, let's hold that okay. thought. I'm Deborah Gilbert. You are tuned in Arts and Entertainment. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Smart TVs and streaming services have taken over the television industry. VSC TV is proud to announce our presence on Apple TV and Roku to make watching your favorite shows even easier. You can access this service by downloading the Cablecast Screenweave app. 
Then choose Valley Shore Community TV from the list of channels. Select VSC TV Live to watch our channel in full HD. Or pick a show from our on-demand video library. VSC TV is your local Connecticut Midshore Valley digital connection. And welcome back to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Deborah Gilbert, your host. And as always, thanks so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the show. Well, my conversation continues on with Anna Maria Trusky. And Anna, you have a very long title and a wonderful history of things that you have done in your life. Is there anything in particular that you have fallen in love with that you love doing? I love doing everything that I'm doing right now um, and I'm interested in lots and lots of things, but, um, I, one of, well, one of the things that I'm, I'm working on too, as I can fit it in is, um, becoming fluent in Italian. I lived in Italy as a child and my mom grew up in Naples and she passed away a year ago, um, April 19th. And I'm still dealing with that. Um, but, um, I, I um, would like to become fluent in Italian. I, I know Italian very well, but I'm not fluent. And I'm really hoping to um, take a trip back there and reconnect with my cousins who I haven't seen since I was in college. And I have 11 of them over there. Um, and so that's one of my passions is, is Italian. The other thing is I just um, got an accordion and I just got a 98 year old um, mandolin made in Naples. Um, Italy and shipped over here from Italy and I'm going to be learning both of those instruments and possibly playing them a little bit um, at the Italian Christmas Eve feast play in December. Um, so we'll see if I can pull that off and I'm going to be also I'm, I'm working on learning a couple of songs that I'd like to sing that are um, classic Italian Neapolitan um, songs. I'd like to sing them during dinner at the um, Italian Christmas Eve Beast play. I have a professional accordionist from Manchester coming down to serenade the audience during um, during the dinner part. And so one of the songs is Return to Sorrento, and the other one is Santa Lucia. And so um, that's something else I'm working on that I uh, love. To the person that's watching us now that's saying, oh my gosh, she has such a background, playwright, nonfiction and fiction writer, an editor, an actor, improv performer, director, producer, any kind of advice for somebody who would be thinking about pursuing um, anything in the arts? I mean, you've touched on so many opportunities here. What would your thoughts be for them to get started? To just get started, um, you have to kind of take the plunge and be willing to put yourself out there. Um, if you see, for example, an ad for auditions, the Groton Regional Theater Facebook page, um, we, we have, you know, we'll be having ads for our fall show, The Nerd, um, which will be in the two uh, middle weekends in September. And, um, you know, just, just try, you know, it's, it's scary. It's scary to put yourself out there. Once you do it, it is so rewarding. You meet so many wonderful people, and it, it's kind of like don't don't be you know one of the one of the most important things is never be afraid to quote unquote make a fool of yourself, because people that that I know anyway in in theater are very um, welcoming, very supportive. It's just a great environment. So. Um, that's what I would say is, you know, be, be willing to take the plunge. And one of my favorite expressions is feel the fear and do it anyway. And that is something that has worked for me um, as I've had many, many journeys with uh, terrible anxiety in my life um, and still do. It's just part of who I am. But feel the fear and do it anyway. You may never not feel the fear, but if you continue to allow it to um, to keep you from doing things that you really want to do, you'll never do them and you'll deprive yourself and probably your community of, of, um, of, your, of expressing the expression of your talent, which is, um, which is a gift that we all have. I mean, it, you know, there isn't, there isn't just a select few people in the world who have creative abilities, everybody does. Um, 
So that, that, that would be my best advice. The other, advi the other bit of advice is just, as a writer, you need to learn to let go of your work and be open to um, critiques, be open to revisions. Um, it's an ongoing process. And once you get something on paper, um, don't, don't hold on to every word you know, for dear life and be afraid to change it or, or feel resentful if somebody has, has feedback for you. Just be open to it. That's very important for, your, for anybody's growth as a creative person, whether it's writing or anything else. One of the things that you've mentioned is director. How do you feel about directing? Is that something that has kind of moved you from being in, in front of, of people to being behind the scenes? What's that like? Um, well, when I first started directing, I was a little shy about it. And I, I had trouble being assertive. And it was kind of hard for, to tell people what to do or whatever. But once I kind of got past that, I really loved directing. And I think being an, having a lot of acting experience and also the improv experience is very valuable um, uh, to help me as a director because um, I, I I see things that I want people to do on stage and I you know I'm much less afraid to say hey okay let's do that over again you know let's see this and I I think because I'm I'm an actor and, and especially if I'm doing something comedic um, I I have a never ending bag of comedic tricks up my sleeve that, you know, I don't even know what they are. They just appear when I, and so um, that helps me, um, I think, in the directing. And I, I really do like the directing. Um, and my favorite thing of all, I think, is, is the writing part. As much as I love acting, um, I, I really do like putting new words out there for people to say and new, creating new characters. Through the, through the writing and through the through the directing as well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to not be on stage. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Then that's a growth process that you've gone through. The writing, did that come naturally to you as you were going through this process? Um, I guess it kind of did. I mean, back I started writing plays back in the, in the 90s, in the mid-90s, and I used to think... Um, Oh, I can't do that. I'd see other people doing, oh, I can't do that. And then I just tried. And I started out with these short comedy sketches. And um, I had so much fun with it. But I always thought, oh, I can't write a full-length play. And then one day I just kept going. And the next thing I knew, I'd written a full-length play. And it was, it was really fun. But I also really love sketch comedy and um, parodies and things. Like um, one of my favorite things that I wrote was, after the Titanic movie came out, I wrote this play called That Sinking Feeling. And um, it was a direct parody of the Titanic movie. And I was the, um, the elderly woman who was reflecting on her, her, you know, her time on, on the ship. And it, it ended with her going you know, into the afterlife at the end. But she was you know, 95 or 99 or whatever. And her former um, boyfriend, who had passed as a teenager, was still a teenager, so, you know, he, she came to him, give me a kiss, you know, and he was sort of, oh, you know, I, I, I like silly things like that. And then, and then I, um, a place that I've done some, a lot of writing for actually is Art Reach, um, the Second Step Players, which is a theater troupe um, that is, it, it's like an art, uh, healing, therapeutic theater for people who have been diagnosed with psychiatric illnesses. And they're based in Norwich, and they're a fantastic group. And I've really enjoyed um, writing for them over the years. They're still very, very active. And um, they used to travel all around the country um, doing the stigma-busting theater. Um, but they did start in, in New London, uh, the New London Waterford area, and um, used to do a lot at the Eugene O'Neill Center. Now they're mostly um, out of the Chestnut Street Playhouse in Norwich. but. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed that. Another parody I did for them was My Big Fat Freak Wedding, which was obviously a parody of My Big Fat Greek Wedding. But the, 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 the twist was that everyone in the Greek family had been diagnosed with a psychiatric illness, and they were horrified that the boyfriend had not been diagnosed with a psychiatric illness. I mean, it was bad enough that he wasn't Greek, but the fact that he was undiagnosed was even worse. So it was, it was a lot of fun. We did that at the Dina Merrill Theater. Um, at the Eugene O'Neill Center for um, 
for, with second step players and that, that's something that I enjoyed quite a bit and definitely want folks to support second step players. That's wonderful. Well, we are starting to run out of time. Are there some closing thoughts or some things that you would like to leave with the viewers right now? Well, I hope they'll they'll come out to Groton and see um, the show on the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and um, come see the other things that, that I'm involved with. And also, there are so many talented people in our state and in our area doing shows all over the place, and they need your support to keep going. So please, um, go see local theater. You will never regret it. It's, there's so much talent. It's just amazing. So, um, you know, so so go out and see a show and bring some friends and go out after and have a great time. Um, that's what keeps the world going. I mean, with all the craziness going on, um, we need these heartfelt experiences of um, emotion that that we can see if we go see live theater. So... Well, that's, you're my, absolutely... that's my my parting, rather incoherent statement. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. You can't be a great, great something in theater and all the things that you mentioned in your background. It's just been so wonderful having you share your life with us. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much, Deborah. Take, take good care. Stay you well. You too. I'm Deborah Thank Gilbert. You. You've been tuned in to Arts and Entertainment. In case you need to reach me, I'm at artsandentertainment at mail.com. Well, I hope you have a super day today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.